Welcome back. We're working on element two, which is the technician exam, and we're in sub element T4 Bravo. Let's go ahead and get started. Question one What is the effect of excessive microphone gain on SSB transmissions? The correct answer is distorted transmitted audio. What happens is your radio peaks, makes a bunch of noise, it cuts out. It's not a good sign. Question number two. Which of the following can be used to enter a transceiver's operating frequency? And that is the keypad or VFO knob. Now on your main HF rig, you're going to have an actual knob that you can spin. On your HTs, technicians, this is probably what you're going to start with most likely. You can just enter the numbers in right here and then hit the enter key or the go key. Mine just happens to be this one right here, the FW key. Uh, if you enter it in, it may, if you enter the right number of numbers, the correct amount of numbers, it may already automatically go to it when you're set in VFO mode. So question four is, how is squelch adjusted so that a weak FM signal can be heard? Well, going back to the radio, if you have the squelch wide open, you're going to hear everything, noise and all. But as you turn your squelch, eventually it cuts out. And you can hear that there's a little click. That's probably from my computer. But if you wanted to hear a weak signal, you want to have that squelch all the way open because they're going to be around the same level as that noise. Now, other transceivers, your VHF, UHF transceivers, may have that squelch as a digital squelch. Those aren't as useful as, and, I, and I'm not sponsored by Yesu, but y these Yesu rigs, ICOM rigs, they usually have one that you can manually turn. So you set the squelch threshold so that the receiver output audio is on all the time. Question four, what is a way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency or channel on your transceiver? And the correct answer is to store it in a memory channel. Now, especially on these VHF rigs, if we go to the memory mode, I have repeaters that have quite a bit of information stored with them. So storing those repeaters is the best way so I don't have to enter that information every time I go to those particular frequencies. So you store it in a memory channel. What does scan the scanning function of an FM transceiver do? It tunes through a range of frequencies to check for activity. And this radio right here has a scan function, and I could scan through memories, or in VFO, it can scan through just all of the frequencies, and then hits the end and starts over. And then if it hears some activity, it'll pause and let you listen to it, and then decide whether you want to listen to it or not. So it tunes through a range of frequencies to check for activity. Now I have a video for this next one. Which of the following controls could be used if the voice pitch of a single sideband signal returning to your CQ call seems too high or low? The question or the answer is the RIT or receive incremental tuning or the clarifier. Now in the video that I'm about to show the RIT, I use CW to use the RIT so you could hear the change in the pitch. So you could hear and see as I turned the knob, the pitch went up or down. And so you can practice that if you want to listen to somebody who's calling CQ or listen to a conversation. You can turn that RIT and listen to how they start to sound like a Star Wars character. Question seven. What does a DMR code plug contain? That is access information for repeaters and talk groups. Now I have 
this is the same thing I looked up at uh, a website a code plug is the configuration file that contains settings and parameters so that you can pro program a DMR which is a digital modal mobile radio and then for whatever radio you might have you go find those code plug files and then you'll have a cable that will connect to that radio and you can program it that way and then you go through and you can go talk to somebody in those talk groups so that is your access information for repeaters and talk groups question number eight what is the advantage of having multiple receive bandwidth choices on a multi-mode transceiver i have a video to demonstrate this as well but it permits noise or or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode now in this next video i did not match the mode to begin with i started on cw while listening to a single sideband conversation and then i went through the three levels of SSB that I have set in my ICOM IC7300. So let's take a look. So this is if you have it set to too thin. That is, it just sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. And then if you go to single sideband, that's very wide. So in that video, I went through CW, which was had a, the original width was about 50 hertz, and you couldn't hardly hear anything out of the person who was talking. Then we went to digital, which is about 4K wide, 4 kilohertz wide. And then we went to 3.6, 2.4, and I think the last one was around 1.8 kilohertz. And it reduced some of the noise that came through, but it also altered the pitch a little bit, too, of what the noise sounds like. You could hear that it started out as a... And so it permits noise or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth that matches the mode. And so hopefully that demonstration gave you a little bit of an idea of what this is talking about. Question number nine, how is a specific group of stations selected on a digital voice transceiver? And you'll have a list of codes that you can enter and you enter the group's identification code. And question 10, which of the following receiver filter bandwidths provides the best signal to noise ratio for SSB reception? Now in that video, the number two was right around 24 to 2800 hertz and so that's a good place to keep it if you want to keep some of the noise out while still receiving the majority of the single sideband transmission that is coming through question 11 which of the following must be programmed into a d-star digital transceiver before transmitting and the answer is your call sign and so if you have a D-Star transmitter by ICOM then, or transceiver, you, you will have to put your call sign where it asks for your call sign to be able to use it. And the last question in sub-element 4B, bravo, is what is the result of tuning an FM receiver above or below a signal's frequency? And the question is that it will cause distortion of the signal's audio. I don't have anybody talking on a repeater around here for me to demonstrate this, but if you are off by a few hertz or a few kilohertz on FM, it's going to sound kind of terrible. So you want to be right on the frequency. So if it's on the national simplex calling frequency of 146.52 megahertz, that's where you want to be. If you go 5 kilohertz up or down, it's going to sound terrible, and you'll sound terrible when you transmit. Alrighty, so the next one we're going to start in sub-element 5. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next go-around. I'm W1RCP Rob 73.